Well, I hope this isn't getting too confusing, but like I said at the beginning, what I'm trying to do in this course is to provide you with the subjects on a plate. Look, simplicity may be the name of the game, and yes, I'm missing out details in these short videos. A lot of the more in-depth uh, material you're going to find in supplementary readings. I mentioned at the beginning the idea very much is take these videos, two, three, four, five minutes, understand the big subjects. If there is one subject which is dividing the region today, it is the subject of the Sunni Shiite divide. No longer are we seeing a cliche of Israel and the Arab world, or even superpowers, or even Arab countries. What we're seeing is that within the old colonial countries, along those artificial borders, many of which were set up, remember we mentioned sykes Pico, you now have an ethnic battle between Sunnis and Shiites. And let's make it more complicated for the more advanced between Sunnis and Sunnis and Shiites and Shiites. So that in 2015, you could have Saudi Arabia, which is Wahhabi, a form of extreme Sunnism, sponsoring Egypt or giving money to Egypt to help fight the Muslim Brotherhood, which is mega Sunni. They also have even more complexity because Iran, which is Shiite, will give money to Hamas, or arms in particular to Hamas, uh, in the uh, Gaza Strip to go and fight uh, Israel. Hamas is Sunni, Iran is Shiite. Let's take a step back, Rob, and look at this subject, which, like I said, is crucially important. If you're not familiar with The Economist, I recommend you read it. Excellent, excellent uh, newspaper. It's British, so some of the American um, participants in the course may not be familiar with it, although it's available there. Um, again, um, I'm going to recommend a lot of different journals. Uh, here in an article, which goes back to May the 28th, 2013, they write an excellent piece on what's the difference between Sunni and Shiite Muslims. Um, let's uh, just quote you a little bit from... Uh, the article which says the argument dates back to the death, remember they're talking about Sunni Shiites, in 632 of Islam's founder, the Prophet Muhammad. Tribal Arabs who followed him were split over who should inherit what was both a political and religious office. The majority who would go on to become known as the Sunnis and take uh, today make up 80% of Muslims, backed Abu Bakr, a friend of the Prophet and father of his wife Aisha. Others thought Muhammad's kin the rightful successor. They claimed the Prophet had anointed Ali. His successor and his son-in-law, they be, became known as the Shi'i, a contraction of Shi'i Ali, the partisan of Ali. Abu uh, Bakr's backers won out, though. Ali did briefly rule as the fourth caliph, the, little given, uh, the title given to Muhammad's successor. Islam's split was cemented when Ali's son, Hussein, was killed in 680 in Kabbalah, modern Iraq by the ruling Sunni caliph troops. Sunni rulers continued to monopolize political power while the Shi'i lived in the shadow of the state. What you see here in this excellent article is a great definition of the difference between Sunnis and Shi'is um, and is going to be very relevant for what we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit later in the course. So let's just uh, give you that reference again. I'm going to include it in the course which says what is the difference between the Sunnis and Shi'is uh, in the Economist uh, uh, article, uh, dated May the 28th, 2013. The difference between Sunnis and Shiites uh, and the violent battle uh, is posing a number of issues for us today to try and understand the Middle East. First of all, it's going to pose that battle between Saudi Arabia and Iran, the superpower battle in the Middle East. But it's also making it very difficult to try and create some form of nation state within the region, because each one of the old states, the so-called colonialist states, if you like, um, have both Sunnis and Shiites and different tribes of Sunnis and Shiites. So it's not only the Sunnis and Shiites fighting each other, but they're fighting within. 
On top of that, what we're also going to see is an ethnic battle between different groups, not only the Sunnis uh, and Shiites. What you see here is an interesting map. Uh, it's a map of where the Sunnis and Shiites actually fall in the region itself. So what you're seeing here in many ways um, is going to be decisive when this whole region is redefined. Uh, if we take uh, the yellow, this yellow area here, obviously Iran, um, but we're going to see it elsewhere as well spreading in a second. We'll talk about that. Those are the Shiites. Sunnis are in the beige, clearly Israel uh, should not be in beige there uh, for obvious reasons. Now, again, it's, it's a little bit simplistic, this map, but I throw it in just again, big picture, big politics, uh, big idea. The message on the plate, if you like, is this. Um, what you're seeing is one, let's have a look at a couple of things. If this is Iraq, this is Iran, what you can start to see is how much of the Shiite population um, is threatening to carve up Iraq. We're going to talk about Iraq separately, but here at this point of the course, let's just look about where they are. Another thing which I think is interesting uh, is that we always talk about Saudi Arabia being uh, Sunni or Wahhabi. But if you notice down that, oil coast you have a number of Shiites there look in Iran uh, sorry in Bahrain which is crucially important because America has its fifth fleet there we'll, we'll talk about this in the Iraq lecture again um, Bahrain is run by a king who is Sunni uh, majority is Shiite which is going to have influence over the whole Gulf which we'll talk about when we talk about Iraq now let me just scroll down a little bit and hopefully we can show you another phenomenon. If you have a look at what's going on in Yemen, remember there's a civil war. The Yemen issue, Sunnis and Shiites. Remember the Shiites are in yellow. This whole area here is going to be crucial because it's the oil route all the way up to the Suez, up to the Suez, uh, which you is up the top there. So hold on, you have Gulf here with the Sunni Shiite uh, battle coming in, Iran, Saudi Arabia. You have Yemen come, like, whoa, well, you can start to understand really, really how important this whole story is.